everybody out there in YouTube land. This is Jen and Christian's with me and we're back for another Masters of Horror episode. Today, tonight, tonight's episode is episode six. It's a Joe Dante directed one and it is called Homecoming. So if you want to hear our thoughts on Homecoming, stick around. Um, so we didn't have anything planned for 4th of July, so consider this our early 4th of July special because this episode's very patriotic. It is, and, and, and when we say that, this is uh, th this is both very poignant and sweet, and it, it's funny. It's it's something that only Joe Dante can yeah, tell these it has elements. Yeah, because it has that really cartoonish, weird sense of humor that he has. But it hits a lot of notes. Yeah, well, also, especially in... um. Current times, like I'm sure in 2006, this was seen as you know rather amusing and you know a bit pretty out there concept. And in 2020, um, hmm. So what? Ha! So what is it about? Well, we open up the story with a political analyst, and he's kind of grooming a what I can call an Ann Coulter kind she's of. She's basically uh, an Ann Coulter. She's an Ann Coulter, you know, very far to the right. It thinks liberals are stupid and all of that kind mm -hmm. of thing. And he he's not really for political. He's just playing a game. And yeah. in fact, that's kind of what it is. It's he's playing uh, he's playing games with people's lives, and that will come in later. And he has somewhat of a tragic backstory that his brother died in Vietnam. And there's a little bit more to it, but I'm not going to ruin it for you guys. No. And um, and and it's funny, and and it has a lot of Joe. This is a signature Joe, Joe Dante episode where yeah. where there's just the, the humor. I can't think of even other horror directors. I cannot think of anyone else who can blend it really well. But as I was saying, this is also a very poignant episode because it's about soldiers coming back from the dead. To do what, you might ask? Vote. Vote, yes. And basically, they sold a war, and I imagine this was commentary back then, too. Yeah. yeah. And they sold a war that basically was bullshit and got a lot of people killed that, you know, didn't need to. It, was, it wasn't for the right reasons to go to war. And um, and they sold, and, and, and the people at the top knew they were selling a war that was basically bullshit and they wanted to vote and get the war stopped and mm. they were coming back from the dead and it sounds kind of like an out there premise but like I said it had a lot of poignancy where yeah. they were lied to and you know for nothing basically. There's a lot of really like yeah this episode is is some people could say ridiculous of all oh, zombies coming back from the dead to vote okay yeah that's a ridiculous premise at heart when you tell it like that but this episode's really saying a lot about it's very how deep. She shitty we treat our soldiers like we'll treat them as you know absolute heroes but as soon as they come over they're literally just bodies on the street piling up for sadly for a lot of them yeah, you know, we don't give them any benefits we don't do anything for any of their medical or mental issues they go have from back there to just kind of like fuck off yeah basically it, it's a little better now but it's still not great there are a lot of veterans you know who come back with all kinds of problems not just physical sometimes sometimes med uh, mental and it, it's it's very sad and this really does shine a light on that aspect yeah and it also shows that sometimes people don't need to die and what they're what they're dying for isn't freedom and liberty it's for other reasons that are more monetary yeah. than anything else so this is a very deep and poignant thing and like I said there's a little bit of backstory with his brother he makes a wish and somehow this all in a twilight zone tells from the crypt kind of way the wish comes true and he has blood on his hands and he has to fix it and like I said this this episode has it all it does have have a lot of humor which is very much Joe Dante. Yeah, you expect that with anything he makes. Yeah, but it's poignant. I, I found myself as well as I was watching this thing and God this is super deep and it's not trying and, and it might sound like way I'm saying it this might have like beat you over the head. No, not no, really. Not it's all. done pretty subtly like, but you, you still get the point. You can definitely tell what Joe Dante is trying to get across in the political side he's on. You yeah. can definitely tell but he's not trying to shove it down your uh, throat. He's just saying like look this is fucked up that we're still doing <laughs> this even you know now almost 20 years after this episode aired you know yeah. it's still doing a lot of the same shit and I, I and I just love how 
it, I love a lot of the humor in this is also like very pitch black, like which is very Dante to do. Mm -hmm. uh, my, probably my favorite gag in the whole episode is um, this Larry King knockoff show, which I believe Joe Dante is the host of. Mm -hmm. um, has this televangelist on talking about as soon as they come back from the dead, he's like, "This is the greatest thing. Our heroes are coming back, and they're gonna save Just us, like save this, save this country from those from those people who want to corrupt it." As soon as he finds out that they want to vote and they're not voting for who he wants to, this is the end times, people. The These end times. De Demons are walking the streets. I love that bit. I, I was like, too. God damn it! That, that if that doesn't sum up televangelist perfect, I don't know what will. Yeah, it, it it hits so many notes and it does it so smartly. But it's still, I still, even if you do, if you do lean to the more the right than the left, he, I don't think it would offend anybody. You know, no, it, it, that's like, what I like about this. It shows both sides. Yeah, it's just saying it's very fucked up. Yeah, you know, we, either way we're letting a lot of fucked up shit happen to people who don't deserve it, you know. This it's fucked up that we try our soldiers like, what are you doing here? You're, we're supposed to die over there. Yeah, um, it, it, this episode has a lot of heart, a little bit of humor and it'll give you a lot to chew on and think about, which is a really great... This it, Still the one episode is still my favorite, but this is probably a close second. This I, is probably my favorite episode of the series and so far. I, I love, love how it ends. Like, it ends as ridiculous as it could, but it also makes you think. It's it a really super does. ridiculous, like, especially the very last frame of the episode. It's a super ridiculous image to end on, but it's weirdly poignant, and like I said, this does fit as a 4th of July thing, because this episode at the end of the day is very patriotic. I would agree with Christian. I would say that if you're looking for something to watch, and there's not a lot, there's some You know, things. we were looking through, we did Uncle Sam last year, that's like the crown jewel of of Independence sure Day stuff. I'm sure others. there was something. We may still do something for 4th of July. We don't know. But, but this, probably this is the best thing. So if you want to watch this, I'd say we'll save this if you want something for the 4th of July. If you want some patriotic horror, this is not a bad choice to get at no. all. And this is one of the better episodes in the Masters of Horror. I really enjoyed it and I found myself strangely moved, which mm -hmm. you know, it's 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 surprising that you know me of all people would be moved by anything, but I was actually strangely moved with this. So uh, definitely a thumbs up if you're a fan of Joe Dante you really need to see yeah, this because yeah. it, it this has a signature to, all over this it. is Dante to the T yeah and it, at his best I might add absolutely at his yeah. best so with all that do you have anything else to say no watch this though it's yeah. a really damn good episode it is a really damn good episode put this at the top of the pile or save it for the fourth because this is a very patriotic poignant horror story that has a lot of relevance today sadly yeah. so with all that out of the way booze and ghouls as always we hope you've enjoyed this episode of Masters of Horror. Uh, what's next week? Oh, next week is John Landis's Deer Women, which is something I'm very excited about. It's combining two things I love, John Landis and Native American folklore. Yeah, so this one should be fun, so tune in next Saturday, which will be. I wish we would have had one more week for this one. I know, before. right? But yeah. But yeah, but tune in for, for on the 4th and see what we got for you next week, kitties. And if you're new around here and happen to like the content of this channel, please hit that subscriber button because we appreciate every subscriber we get. And with that, we wish you a good day a good evening and we'll talk to you guys real soon stay spooky guys cheers